Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be part four on this radio. This is a vacuum tube radio from 1964. It is a Starlight and it's got two speakers and this is part four in the series on this radio. In the first earlier parts we dealt with the fact that we had a burned out component. We found it, replaced it, got the radio working again. Then we, but we didn't find out what caused the, the burnout in the first place. But then we went ahead and did the alignment. We fixed the FM alignment, which I think was causing the FM to be pretty well distorted. So we think that really got better. But then the old gremlin came back and caused this thing to stop working again. The dim bulb saved us, but it made it to where this is not working correctly. So last episode we went through and found the problem, got it resolved, and now we're up to episode four. So the way we left this is, is what are we going to do now? about the power, how the power cord is going to go in, and how we're going to route the power. You know, are we going to polarize the line or not? And then, frankly, I'm not happy with the hum. So we're going to, at the end of this, we're going to address the hum, and we'll get on to that. All right, so the other videos in this series, I'm going to put in a playlist. You'll find them down below in the comments. Just click on Show More, and you'll find that... Uh, that playlist down there and that way you can see episodes one two and three if you have missed them or if you want to go back and see any of those i'm also going to pop a card up here in the upper right hand corner here that will also send you that playlist as we go through the video you're going to see a checklist pop up over here on the left this is where i'm showing you know what needs to be done and what we have done so when it gets added to the list it'll be in red and it'll stay red until it gets addressed and then when it gets addressed it'll turn green that way you can kind of track to see where are we, what all we've done, and it makes it just a little easier to follow. So I hope that works out well for you guys. All right, so without any more doubt, or ado, <laughs> all right, so let's get back into episode four. It plays pretty good. The other thing I did was I hooked up a FM dipole antenna to the lead I had put into the back of this, and now the FM comes in really strong. All right, so I'll show you that a little bit later, but the reason I'm delaying right now is I'm trying to figure out what I want to do next, okay? So I've got some safety capacitors that I was going to put in there on the, uh, on the uh, power inlet side. There's a, where the power comes in here, there's a, there's a uh, couple of disc capacitors, there's a disc capacitor here, and at least, and there's some others. I'll replace that with a Y2 uh, capacitor. Um, there may be two others. I need to check which ones are which. The, the next question though is what do I do about the wiring? Okay, am I going to change where I've got the plug, I'm uh, sorry, where I've got this, the switch and the fuse and all that good stuff? Well, it really kind of depends. It depends a little bit on whether I'm going to be doing anything different with the, with the interlock. Okay, so the question is, is, can I save the interlock or not? Now, you remember it fell out of the, the back plate that was on here. Um, if that stays falling out and I can't do anything with it, then what I'm going to do is probably skip the interlock, hardwire in a new cord with the uh, polarized plug, and I'll go in there and I'll do things with uh, the switch wiring and where the fuse is, and I'll put in a thermistor and all that good stuff uh, like I normally do. Um, but if the interlock works, I, I prefer to leave the interlock on because it's nice. I don't need to worry about hot chassis at all because if someone pulls the back off, it's dead. and There's no way they can touch it. And yeah, the, you can discuss whether or not you still want to do it anyway, but I think that it's safer leaving it with the interlock. So if you pull the interlock, the, the panel off, it's dead. If you can't salvage that, then yes, I believe you should put, say, you know, put the safety capacitor, but also, you know, have this it's polarized to go to neutral and so forth, okay? Uh, so it all depends on whether I'm able to salvage that interlock. So what I've done is I've tried to re-glue this. So what I've done is I've put the, I put the inter interlock plug in as best I can here. I don't, I don't actually think this is going to work. But I put the interlock plug in, I put the broken bits of this fiberboard back in place, and I've glued it. And I've got it clamped in between these uh, gluing clamp blocks I have in here, and we'll just see how this does. I'm gonna I'm gonna let this set up overnight, and we'll see if that looks solid enough and if it's gonna stay in place. If it is, then that'll take me one direction. Uh, if it won't, then like I say, I'm probably gonna then just say, the heck with it. I'm gonna rip the interlock out of out of out of this. Just put a hole in, bring it in, and redo the wiring, and 
polarize that to neutral. All right, so we won't know until tomorrow we get this thing all done. Okay, it's this next morning. Let's see how we did. All right, so I'm not going to just immediately start yanking on this, just in case it needs to be glued a little bit more, have some reinforcement added. Let's we'll see what we get here. Still a little wet there. Have to let that dry a little bit more. This will clean up the water. Let's see. Which way should I guess I'll do it this way? All right. So keep in mind, I didn't glue this to this. I just put it in the slot and then glued the, uh, f the fiber board back into place around it. So the more I look at that plug. Okay, well, my mind's made up for me now. This thing is bent such that you can see the wires. The bare wires are exposed. I'm sorry I didn't notice that before. Darn it. All right, well, I'm not going to use the interlock anymore. It's a shame. So I guess for an experiment, how did this work? Pretty darn good, actually. I think that had this cord here still been okay, I think I could live with that but I cannot live with that. That's not going to work for me. So, good experiment. This could work in the future. I mean, that's definitely solid. That's not coming out. That worked. But unfortunately, I'm not going to live with that. So what I'm going to do, let me think about it, but basically what I'm going to do is not use this cord anymore. I'll put a hole in uh, I have to slot it so this can be removed from the back panel and then uh, it'll look like hell unfortunately uh, but anyway and then I'll rewire the chassis to put polarize this to neutral the most important economic factor. okay so since we decided we're gonna replace this plug here then I'll figure out the specifics of how this works in there but basically I'll be going through the back of here I may just stick the plug through here I may decide to slot this so that if someone takes the back off, they can pass that over the cord. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I'm also not sure if I like having this much space here. So I, I, I'm going to see what I can do with that. Anyway, I'm going to do one thing at a time. All right, so then the next part is, is the wiring in here. Okay, so the way this is wired currently, let me get you in here let you see because I'm going to show you what I'm changing. All right, so here's the power supply section. You'll focus, okay. So what we've got is we've got power comes in here. The way that this unit is wired is these items are there. The switch is not here, the switch is here. So this here, which will end up being the line, is gonna come in, it's gonna hit a .002, it's going to hit a choke, and then it shows a switch, and then from the switch it comes down and feeds the heaters with a filter here of a 0 .01 microfarad capacitor. That is the way it's wired. 
uh, on this side here, which will end up being the neutral, it is wired to go to a fuse, which is one amp. And then it does have this network. It does have an LC network here. So there's a 0.02, and there is a choke here that goes to the chassis. All right. All right, so what I've done is decided, first of all, I'm going to wire this with a polarized plug. I'm going to polarize the chassis to be neutral. So the neutral is going to come this way. I am not going to put the fuse here. I'm going to put the fuse on the line side, the hot side. So the question is, do I need this LC? The answer is no. I don't believe so. This is mainly if you have, this is a non-polarized plug, so if you had hot coming this way to the chassis. I verified that by, I laid a, a jumper across here to verify that I had no difference in performance and hum or any of that sort of thing. I also looked at other radios, and they just have the, the line comes in and goes straight to ground. Okay, so I'm going to do that. That'll simplify some things. I'll show you where in just a moment. All right, so then up here we're going to have the, the, uh, the fuse, and then we're going to have the switch, but we'll have this LC there as well. Uh, it ends up actually making a pi network between here and here. Okay, so that is actually needs to be there. All right, so let me show you how this is going to be wired up. So what I'm going to do is, let me see, I'm going to move this over, you can kind of see them side by side. Okay, so when the line's going to come in, I'm going to hit the 1 amp fuse, I'm going to hit the switch, then I'm going to go to that 0 .002, and I'm going to replace it with a Y2 safety cap, that'll then go to the chassis. It'll then hit this choke, now you can see that Pi network. It's going to hit this choke, and then it's going to come here, and go down to the heater string, but here's where it's going to get that 0 .01, I put another Y2 there. That corresponds to this guy right here. Uh, and then here's that main first main power resistor that then goes to the, to the uh, rectifier, which is right here and here. Okay, I've actually this actually has a capacitor bypass, but don't worry about this. All right, so then on the neutral side, I'm going to put in a thermistor here, a CL90, uh, and then onto the ground. So this will help with inrush. It won't be a problem sitting here, uh, but when we turn this thing on, it'll help with the inrush and. Uh, and uh, also reduce the voltage a little bit on this on this on this system. All right, so where is this going to go? All right, so first of all, this since I've got my camera set there, this capacitor right here, this this which will be a Y2, is sitting right here. So that's it right there. So I'll replace that with one of these right here. So these are. It's a 0 0.01 microfarad Y2 capacitor that'll go there. And then the other ones are up here. So they come up here. Okay. So here is the back side of the fuse. So the fuse is right, will be right there. All right. So the way it is, is it comes in. Right now it's, it's got what will be the neutral comes in here, goes to the fuse, and it hits the uh, capacitor and the choke before going to what is the ground lug on the old capacitor that then goes to the chassis right down below. All right, so I've decided I don't need this, so this will be going away. Okay, and then this will end up being part of the line uh, circuit. So let's ignore that for a minute. Well, it'll then go down after it comes out of here. I want to go back to the, to the neutral side. The neutral is going to come through, and I'm going to have to use a, a terminal lug strip somewhere, and I'll put in the uh, the thermistor, and then it'll go to chassis. All right, and I'll probably mount that lug probably up on top. Where I have these lugs, where I have the uh, the new the new electrolytics. Probably what I'll do is I'll use that screw that you see sticking up behind the old electrolytic and use that to tie down the uh, a new terminal strip to mount the thermistor on. The neutral will come into that, tie onto it, uh, that'll give me a good strain relief, and then from there it'll go on to ground. All right, on the hot side, or the line side, it'll come in, it'll go through that fuse. This will be disconnected. This will now come around over to here. Now back over here is where the original second capacitor and the first choke that was before the switch before is here. 
So I'll leave that, and then this then goes to the to the switch. So, but what I may do is come out of out of the fuse, go to the switch, come back from the switch, go through this uh, capacitor and choke, and then go on to the rest. You know, going back to the uh, power resistor, the heater strings, and the uh, rectifier. Uh, but this little capacitor right here needs to be changed out, and you can hardly see it in there. That one needs to become a safety capacitor. So what I'm going to do is just clip its lead and get it out of the way as much as possible. And then what I'll do is I'll mount that safety capacitor right across here, across the, uh, the choke. I have to put it down here because the chassis mounting screw comes through from the outside, and it actually comes through quite a bit. So I can't put it here. I need to tuck it back underneath. So I have a little bit of wiring shenanigans to go through, but uh, anyway, that's what my plan is. And when I bring you back, I'll, you'll either see that done, or you'll see what I ended up having to do to make it happen. So anyway, bring you back when it's done. Okay, well it's been several hours of work, and uh, I've done the rewiring. I haven't uh, put the power to it yet to see how we did. So if I blow it up, you can get to watch it. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, what we did is I took a I took an old cord that I had that was a very close match to the one that was on there. Here's the one that was on there. With the uh, here's the damaged part here where the wire is showing, and this wire is that I found that I had is same size, same color. It's going to work fine. This uh, non-polarized plug, I have a replacement for that. Uh, it's a new made one. This is polarized and NEMA related, uh, rated and UL rated for re uh, residential use. So I'll be using this one to replace this eventually. So I've got it set up to where the neutral line on here, which is of course marked by ridges, goes to the chassis. So as we discussed here, I went through and I have the neutral goes through the CL90 and the chassis. So let's watch, let's look at that one first. All right, so the line comes in. This is where the barrier was, the uh, the terminal for the inter interlock was here. Remove that, there was a hole. I inserted a rubber grommet. Through that grommet, I passed our new cord into there and tied it with a knot on the inside. So there's a, there's a knot in here. All right, so there's a knot in there. All right, the one that's neutral comes up through here, comes through this opening, and ties to this new uh, lug strip here. What I did was, is I attached it to the same screw that I have attached the uh, strip for this. So they both go through that same lug. I'll put a drop of paint on that later, but I don't really need it. It's got a nylock on it. Anyway, so the, the, the neutral comes in here, goes through the CL90, and then comes back out to this lug here. Then from here, it's this black wire. This black wire comes around and ties off and goes to ground, just as the ground does from the filter caps. It goes there, and there's a there's a lead that goes and ties to the chassis right in there. Okay, so that's neutral. All right, so for the hot, what we're going to do the line, if you remember, is we go line to fuse. Let's talk about that first. So here's the line coming in. The line comes in here, goes to the fuse. Output of the fuse is blue wire. Blue wire comes up and it should go to out of the fuse goes to the switch. So the blue wire comes up, there's two blue wires, comes up and goes to the switch in here. The output of the switch it's also blue, comes over here and runs to this little strip here where there's a coil. And there's a coil right in there. This blue wire is what I'm talking about here. So that blue wire comes in after the switch and comes to here. So what we've got is we've got two paths. I've inserted a .002 Y2 capacitor, that blue capacitor you'll see in there. Uh, you'll see it down in there. That blue capacitor goes to ground. The other side of the other connection goes through this choke. But then comes the other side of this choke. Now the other side of the choke is here. 
Let's go three places. One of them is to a power resistor that goes to the rectifier. The other one goes to the heater string. And the last one goes to a 0.01 Y2 capacitor. Okay, so we got one, two, three positions. So as we come out of that choke right here, we go to a couple of wires here. One of them is this black wire that comes up and it goes to this first power resistor, which is here. That then goes to here, that goes to the rectifier, that then goes to those other power resistor I did and the other filter capacitors. Okay. If you go back to here, there's a blue wire down here, and that is the heater line that runs off down here and it goes to pin four on the uh, output tube, which is down here. When it gets down here though, it also has, and there's that 0 0.01 Y2 capacitor that then goes to here and goes to ground. I've gone through and I've checked all these connections. I have soldered them all. I did miss one, so I found it. And now we're ready to go to power up and we'll just see did I destroy it or not. It's always exciting. Alright. Alright, so uh see I gotta get the speakers hooked up. I do have an isolation transformer, but uh, I'll go ahead and do that anyway for these connections here. All right, let's turn it on. Let's turn the voltage down. Dim bulb is in the circuit. All right, we are at 50 volts. I'm going to turn on the power, and I'll be watching the dim bulb over here. I know you can't see it. Maybe I'll see if I can let you see it. Can you see it? There here you go. So we'll see if it lights up. Well, nothing happened because I need to plug it in. All right, so let's plug it in. Make sure we can see a couple of things at once. Okay, plugged in. Okay. There we go. Okay, you can see we're at 50 volts here. And let's see, let's turn it on. Pulling some watts here. Okay, I'm going to take it on up. I don't have any glow on the dim bulb. You see the watts I'm pulling, 12 watts, no glow on the bulb. We're at 90 volts going in. So the uh, thermistor, you know, has to heat up before uh, it, its resistance drops. And it'll drop down quite a bit. After, actually, it'll be interesting. Once I get this up to voltage, uh, I may bypass it and measure what the voltage is. Well, I can't really do that because I'm going through a very act. But anyway. Let's go to 117. That is Larry on me. He was he he had targeted Larry on Johnson, and what he would do he was going to be able to get him at 21. He went for it, the backup plan, a uh, strange. It was a strange pick, all right. Like you just said. So uh, I don't like the look of where the world is heading right. <laughs> So FM works. It's FM AFC. Mercy ships will double our ability to reach children and adults. Sorry, that was AM. This is FM AFC.
and the fire stick. Back to AM. Houses that are able to stay level, um, particularly the older houses that we work on. Okay, I think it was a success. So, uh, I guess what I can do is try to see, just get an idea what the voltage is after the thermistor. So, I know I get like uh, 120, 123 volts or so at the house. Let me get this set, the variac output to be that. Okay. I need to leave the draw power draw on. So let's see. Okay, let's put this at 123. Okay, so there's there's kind of what I'm getting at the house, about 123. So let me see what the voltage is coming out of the thermistor. So I should be able to do that by going to ground. And let's see, we want to go to, I guess the switch, or coming out of the switch. Or I could get it coming out of the fuse, right? Let me just get it right here, coming out of the fuse. Yeah, so what, when I have 123 running at the house, that thermistor is dropping it to 117 and a half volts, which is what this is really designed for, is around 117 uh, RMS, and this is RMS. So that's one of the nice things about using those thermistors is it drops the voltage down and it also limits the inrush, so that'll help preserve the circuit and the tubes. So uh, that's, that's really good. I like that. All right. It works.
Okay, we're going to see what difference it makes changing the uh, 12 DT8s out. I got a couple of these from an online source. And we'll just see how they work. I'm going to change them out one at a time and see if it makes any difference. One of them is going to go to the thermistor first. So I'm going to hit it right on the input to the thermistor to verify my neutral, which should be this one. And it is. Okay. Final check. All right, so we got, here's the wide blade. And that should be connected to the input of the thyristor. And it is. Okay, so we've got the polarization done correctly. Okay, I'm going to plug this into the house current now. I guess I'll check to make sure I don't have a short first. Make sure I don't. Once again, it's funny, but the reality is that person manipulates people every day of the purchase of your home. Probably some time ago. Could be years ago. Biggest majestic oak trees and the highest elevations in the entire community. Okay, so that all still works. Now I'll take it to the house mains. Okay, I'm going to put it back in the box.
Okay. So there's the back done. Polarized plug. FM antenna, which you can clip onto a lead. Okay, knobs. So this one's in the off position. I'm going to put its little tab kind of over here about, I don't know, 7 o'clock. This is the one I glued and put the shrink tubing on. I want it to be the one that's going to be used the least, which I believe will be the tone control. And the tone control is going to have a middle position, so let me find it. Okay, it's right there. Okay. There we go. This one has a middle position as well. Let me put it here. That cloth is kind of messed up. Okay, this one looks a little better. And let's find the middle position on this one. Right there. Okay, so there we have it.
Hey guys, so we're coming back to this. It's been it's been a couple of weeks since I finished this thing, put it back in the cabinet. I even did some you know demonstration of it out at the park and showing going through it and so forth. But the hum that's been in here is just driving me crazy. And um, especially went through and started editing the video on this, the, the hum got to be just so annoying to me. I just thought this is just not right. I went back and looked at earlier stages when I when I first dealt with and uh, you know the blown resistor and and got it working again and, and the hum was actually there then okay um, I thought it was the filter capacitors which I replaced but then even then the hum was still there and so I just decided I really don't like it so let's get back into this thing I've taken it back out of the case taken the cover off the back obviously and I'm going to turn it up and you can hear the hum Okay, I have it in FM right now between stations. Now it's actually there in AM as well. It's just that AM has more, I guess, noise associated with it, so that you can't hear it so easily. But it is actually there. So. I tend to the Beltway just over half an hour. West Beltway eight northbound slowing this event to Byerville Drive. There we go. This AM. So you can hear all the other static from the switch mode power supplies and so forth I have in here. Um, so, but the hum is there. I can actually hear it. So I want to do something about it. So I'm going to go back to FM so we can hear it a little more clearly without all that other uh, RF noise in the room. Okay. That's FM. You can hear the hum. Okay, so let's, let's see what we can do to resolve this. So I've done a lot of work on this, and I think I've got it where it's going to be okay. So let me get this propped up here somehow. Okay. So what I've done is I've looked at this, and I found that there's basically two sources of hum. Part of the hum varies with volume, but there's some hum down there even with the volumes turned down really low. Alright, so a couple of places. I'll, I'll pop it up on the screen as the schematic that shows you what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about this resistor right here. Okay, this is a a 28 ohm 5 watt resistor that's before you get to the rectifier. So this goes from the switch then comes in and goes to the rectifier. Well, this tube socket right here is the detector. Okay, so I think what we've got is a wire dress issue here. So if I take that and pull this out of the way, let me turn it up a little bit so you can hear it. So that helps the hum out some, but another thing I found is that I think that I'm getting some RF, not RF, but I'm getting some of that hum picked up by the shell of the potentiometer. Now it may be coming from the power leads, which go to the on-off switch, which is right here, of course, in the back of the potentiometer. Okay, but I'm getting that hum coming into the volume control, and that if I ground that out, it goes away. So what I think what I'm going to do is hook up a capacitor. So what I've done is I've got, it's not much voltage there. I've got a small capacitor. It's a 47 at, uh, what is that, 35? So that takes it out. So it's kind of the same thing there. So I think between this getting rerouted and putting some, you know, filtering off of the capacitor, off with the capacitor off of the can of the volume control. This is now back to being pretty tolerable. I mean, you really can't hear it. So that's FM. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and. Uh, 
I'm going to go in and redo the wiring on this. I'll bring you back when I get all that done. I think what I might do is try to run it along this way, but we'll see. Just to get it to where it's not going right past this uh, detector tube. And it's also going past one of the IF cans right in there. So I'm going to see if I can just bring it around this way. And then I'm going to find a way to put some capacitance um, on that can there to see if I can filter that out so it's it's basically shielded. So let me get all that done. I'll bring you back and see if we can get this thing looking, looking and sounding better. Okay, I got the uh, mods made. I've uh, changed this power resistor. The, uh, what was it, 28 ohm power resistor that was kind of going through here, which is where it was installed originally. I've run it along this way and brought the line around all the way around through here back in here but it's going past these other power cords that are already you know power lines coming in with the uh, AC on it so it's really not much different it's up against the case so it's not running amongst all of this uh, equipment here so got that done and then I put a small 47 well I put a 47 uh, microfarad at 35 cap right here that goes from the ground which I picked up the ground off the volume control right there and then just brought it around here then I had, uh, you know, like you get in these bags of uh, BNC connectors, I had a, uh, a terminal that I was able to repurpose and put onto the post of the volume control here, which then makes connections through to the shell. So that's not, ice, that's not connected to anything else on the inside, but it's connected to the shell. So that gives me that ground to the shell of the volume control I wanted. Okay. Let's uh, get it turned on and see how it does. Let me get this back in here. It keeps wanting to tip. I'll bring it right back. Okay, I'm going to go to power up. Uh, that's off. Alright, so let's see what we got. This is AM. Two balls, two strikes to Jose Altuve. Runner at second base in Jose Siri. Here's the pitch from Cal Quantrill. That one hit back right in front of us. Columbine in Colorado. Pearl was in Mississippi. Springfield was in Oregon. Okay. Now I'm going to put it back in the box. Okay, guys. So we're back out here at the park. Let's uh, see how it does. As we're here in an airplane getting in closer. Let this warm up. I have it in uh, AM. Middle tone position. Let's see how it does. I hear an airplane getting closer. Okay, here it comes. Other angles on this big story, plus all the latest key news right here, you can weigh in. Right, that we've got a face. And I found out I had 82. I'm like, okay, it's more than 50, so let me just get to 100. So I went back through, and I was like, okay, I was debating this guy. We need to hit around here. I know we're going to give our full plays a little bit later on. We want to keep the people around. National claim for the young engineer. Electric vehicle back in 1900. It's taken this long for him to catch on. We're going to focus on what factors lead to that. Make that left. 16 doubles, fourth best in the American League. And a great way to start the second inning. Keeping the pressure on Logan Gilbert. That extra base. Function with handguns. Like 1,300. Somebody talk to me. She makes her donations based on years. Okay, switch over to uh, FM now. I don't hear any hum. And we don't have near the distortion we had before.
I don't count auto tune. <laughs> Days. 50% off sounds like a great deal. Well, guaranteed free energy on the hottest day. Sweet lips. Yielding beneath my cool name. Oh, do my best. Houston Weather is a service of AAA, partly closed. Amber Mawson. So, Amber, a 1 800 truck wreck. Switch to T Mobile 5G home internet for just 30. There's no way to know how long it would last. One big caveat is that the vaccine targets the original. Okay, guys, so I think this thing's turned out pretty darn good. So we started off with this thing. It didn't work. Uh, we found that there was a resistor burned out. We replaced the resistor, but we didn't find out what made it go bad. Then we did the alignment. I think we really brought in the uh, FM to sound much better. It was having a, a very high, had high gain, but it was also very distorted. So we got the alignment done, and then the thing quit on us. And we found out that we had a possibility of two possible things that might have been causing short circuits. Uh, one of them was a solder blob, and the other one was the way the bales went onto the uh, audio output tube. I frankly think it was the uh, audio output tube bales that did it. Uh, so we put this thing back in, and we found out how we could do the power. We redid the power, as you saw. And uh, then finally we uh, dealt with uh, the hum. And I think it turned out really, really well. So once again, this is a Starlight from 1964. It is an AM-FM two-speaker radio. I really appreciate y'all stopping in and watching. And thanks for all the kind comments. Talk to you guys later. Bye.